Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we're going to talk about how to create a TL431 LTS Spice model. So in this video we will see first an introduction, then we will show the basic operation of the TL431. We will present the model that we will be using to implement this device in LTS Spice. Next, we will show the testing of this model to verify that it is operating correctly. And finally, we will see how to do the model implementation in LTS Spice. These are two important videos related to this topic, LTS Spice number three, how to create new components, and LTS Spice number four, how to create new components from schematics. So if you are not familiar with creating components for LTS Spice, please take a look at these videos. TL431 is a precision programmable reference that is very useful in many applications. We are going to use here as a reference the information from the manufacturer Texas Instruments, but please note that in no way this is an um, endorsement of this manufacturer against many others that are providing also good TL431 devices. So here we have some examples. It can be used as a shunt regulator as shown here so we can obtain an output voltage using this expression here. This is for a low output power. If we want to increase the output current, then we can use this other schematic here. We are adding a bipolar transistor so we can handle more current at the output. But there are other many uh, circuits that can be implemented with the TL431. For example, here we have a delay timer. And here we have another interesting application, which is a precision current limiter. So we can limit the current that is circulating through the output. However, one of the most important applications of TL431 in power electronics is to implement closed loop compensators in power supplies and DC-DC converters. For example, here we have an um, excerpt from a data sheet corresponding to this integrated circuit, the 3844. And here we can see how this integrated circuit is uh, used to implement a um, power supply. And the TL431 is employed here to implement the controller for closed loop operation. Especially it is very useful when we want to implement isolation in the loop of the converter because with the TL431 we can regulate the current that is going to circulate through the diode and then send this information into the phototransistor here and finally into the integrated circuit. So in this first video we are going to see how to implement the TL431 in LTS Spice and the idea is that in future videos we will see how to implement different controllers using this device. So here we have information corresponding to this device, the TL431. This is the symbol. At the end it is represented like a sinner with a reference so we can control the sinner voltage of the device. So at the end we have a programmable reference voltage. So we have the cathode of the diode, the anode, and then the reference to adjust the sinner voltage. If we go to the data sheet and look for information, we will see that they provide this equivalent circuit. So we have an operational amplifier here, we have a transistor at the output, a diode with this direction here, and then we have a reference voltage at the inverting input. 
and the reference terminal is connected to the non-inverting input of the amplifier here. So this is the schematic, the internal schematic of this device with the different stages and some important information that I have highlighted here is the following. The device can be operated and adjusted to cathode voltage between 2.5 volts and 36 volts. So this means that between the cathode and the anode we can have a voltage that is within this range. However, in order for this device to behave as a shunt regulator or error amplifier, we need at least 1 milliampere of current circulating into the cathode pin. So we need to design this so that at least 1 milliampere of current is going into the cathode. So when it is operated with enough voltage headroom higher than 2.5 volts and enough cathode current, then the device is going to force the reference pin to 2.5 volts. So this means that here internally we have 2.5 volts and when the device is operating correctly we are going to have also 2.5 volts at this input here. The differential voltage of the operational amplifier is going to be zero and then we will have the same voltage at both inputs. However, there is an important point here they say that the reference pin cannot be left floating. We need at least a current of 4 microamperes entering into the reference pin here because as we can see here in this schematic this corresponds to the base of this transistor and we need a little current circulating into the base so the transistor can operate correctly. So let's see first how the TL431 operates because the operation of this device is a little bit tricky. We can see here the equivalent circuit. So it has an operational amplifier here and a transistor at the output. So with this structure, the behavior is like an um, operational transconductance amplifier. But if we implement this with a resistance here connected to a power supply and then we take the output voltage, then the behavior is going to be like a regular voltage operational amplifier and it can be expressed or modeled like this. So let's see the operation. If we do like this with our TL431, we connect the output to a resistance and then to a DC power supply, VCC. Here we have our reference voltage, 2.5 volts, which is the reference voltage here. Then the output voltage is going to be, of course, the DC voltage minus the resistance R times the current circulating here from the source. If we analyze this in a small signal, then of course we can make zero the reference voltage and also the power supply, and then we will have here this model in a small signal. So we can say that the operational amplifier has a gain, which is a S here in Laplace domain, and also we can model the bipolar transistor in a small signal by using the transconductance of the bipolar transistor. So we can say that the current circulating here through the collector of the transistor in a small signal is equal to the base voltage Vb times the transconductance of the bipolar transistor. So with this we can get all these expressions here, the output voltage in a small signal at the output, the voltage at the base is going to be the gain of the operational amplifier times the input voltage 
The current circulating through the collector is the transconductance of the bipolar transistor times the base voltage. And then for the collector current of the transistor can be expressed like this. So we can call this part here GM, which is the product of the gain of the operational amplifier times the transconductance of the bipolar transistor. So we finally have this expression here. The output voltage is minus GM times the resistance times the input voltage. So we can see that this is the voltage gain of the structure. So we can model all this by using this equivalent circuit in which we have a voltage operational amplifier with this gain A prime which is equal to Gm times R. And note that we have reversed the polarity of the operational amplifier so now the input goes into the inverting input of the operational amplifier and the non-inverting input of the operational amplifier is connected to ground. In this way we can say that the gain of this operational amplifier is Gm times R. So we reverse the polarity here so we can get rid of this minus sign here and then the gain of this operational amplifier, the equivalent operational amplifier of the structure is Gm times R. Let's see now how to implement a typical application like a voltage amplifier. If we connect to our device this impedance here from the output to the non-inverting input and another impedance here, C1 at the input, so this is our new input. Then we are implementing a feedback here, which can be a little surprising because we can see that this is almost like a positive feedback because we are sending information at the output into the non-inverting input, but this is not like this because in reality there is a negative sign in the middle as we have seen. So this circuit here is equivalent as we have seen in the previous slide to this arrangement here. So we have our operational amplifier, the input voltage goes into the inverting input and we have a reference voltage here connected to the non-inverting input. And then we have the feedback impedance here C2 and the other impedance, the input impedance here C1. So at the end all this is equivalent as having an operational amplifier with this gain as we have just seen and if we design everything so that this gain is high enough as we usually do in regular voltage amplifiers, operational amplifiers, if this gain is very high or within the range in which this gain is very high, then the differential voltage is going to be almost zero, negligible, and then we will have an output voltage that is going to be the common expression C2 over C1 with a minus sign times the input voltage, which is now Vi prime. So this is valid in the range in which we can say that the gain, voltage gain A prime is very high. Of course, for the exact response of, of this arrangement here in frequency, we need to consider the full response of our system, which is Gm times R. And we can analyze the frequency response of this amplifier as we do in a regular operational amplifier considering the, the gain of the voltage operational amplifier. So now that we know how the TL431 operates, we can go ahead and design a model for LTS pies. So here is the model that we have implemented. As we can see, we have an operational amplifier here, a voltage operational amplifier that is driving here a current source, which represents the behavior of the transistor. We have the reference voltage here, 2.5 volts. 
we are adding here um, a diode uh, with a series uh, voltage in order to model that the device cannot operate with a voltage lower than 2.5 volts. We have also implemented this other diode that is also in the behavior of the device. So if we applied negative voltage, positive voltage here at the anode and negative voltage at the cathode, then this uh, diode is going to conduct. So this is not the normal operation, of course, of the device. For this diode here, we have used uh, almost an ideal diode with these parameters here. And for this other diode, we have also used an almost ideal diode, but we have also implemented a low reverse voltage of 40 volts to implement also the effect that we cannot have a voltage here between the cathode and the anode higher than 36 volts. So we have selected something similar, 40 volts, to give a little margin, but in any case, this is not the normal operation again of the device. So the important parameters here to model the behavior of the device are the response of the operational amplifier with a given DC gain and a given bandwidth and also the gain corresponding to the bipolar transistor, the transconductance of the bipolar transistor. With these different parameters, we are going to model the frequency behavior of the device. And we are, at the end, leaving all of the frequency behavior to the operational amplifier. So we are modeling the transconductance of the bipolar transistor just by using a fixed value of the transconductance, which here is 5 milliamperes per volt. So here we have the DC gain of the complete system, which will be the DC gain of the operational amplifier, 750 times 5 milliamperes per volt. So the final transconductance of the complete system is 3.75 amperes per volt. Of course, this is the DC value. So the complete model, as we know, in a small signal is going to behave like this with a gain A prime, which is given by Gm times the resistance that is going to be connected to the cathode. Well, this video is getting long and I don't want to make you tired, so we are going to stop here for today and we will continue with the modeling of this device in the next video. We will see the different characteristics and how to implement different applications using the TR431. So thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.